Okay, I'm going to try to be short because I brought Luca with me and I want him to give you a demo um, at the end, which is a bit longer than we originally planned. For those who want to jump right to it, there's the, the link maps.ob.com slash 3D, which is the 3D stuff. I made sure it's a different um, internet line so we um, don't have him uh, share the bandwidth with you because it's quite a bandwidth intense application. So anyway, for those who want to jump to it directly, I just have the link here. But let me tell you a little bit of um, how um, you know, we have all evolved the, the, the mapping. Um, we go next slide. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So um, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of where we have been and what we have done in the last um, couple of years. So we basically have, um, you know, evolved um, our platform quite considerably. It has um, it has global coverage, and it it is basically available in many many countries um, around the world. Um, and basically, we have now basically delivered this in China, in India, and in many places. So basically, where we have come from a very few countries to basically um, a global coverage in, um, in, in around the world. And let me basically, can, can you make sure I can see the slides too here? It's a bit difficult because I can see my own slide. <laughs> let me just go down and look at my slide. So anyway, um, I want to talk a little bit about how um, we're basically doing the map making before I go to um, let Luca do the demo. So basically today we have the mapping product available in 211 countries around the world. We have a navigation product available in 100 countries. We used to start in 30 countries, so we really expanded to 100 countries. So when you have a Nokia handset, you essentially can map and navigate in close to 100 countries. We do have um, basically by now tens of millions of active users per month. So it's always, um, I think, a well-kept secret, but I think this is one of the most pervasively used location-based platforms. Um, we have on our new Symbian handsets, about 70% of the active users going to use the drive application on a um, continuous basis. So when we look at the usage now, we have on average four hours of, um, of, um, of user time per month spread over 11 sessions. So it's quite an active platform where years ago we came from a few, um, we came from a few um, sessions per month. We came to basically um, 11 sessions um, now. And we, go, we definitely go to a, to a phase where we have multiple sessions per day. So you see on the right-hand side this little heat map where the product is being used. It's really just the deserts and the tundras where the product isn't used. So it's really a product that's used by billions of people potentially. Now, when we look at the way we capture data, you know that we um, own the NAFTEC asset. So we have on one end, we have the industrial capture process, which is about driving around, um, you know, recording um, lots of um, millions of kilometers of roads. And you will see also the LiDAR, the new equipment that NAFTEC has to go to complete new levels of um, data capture. We then have a lot of professional partnerships. And we have on the right-hand side something we do more and more, which is actually getting the data from the community. That's why this is a community platform. So we use it in an explicit way where people will contribute to the map wiki, which is something that we are currently testing in, um, in Africa. Also, the other approach is actually doing it implicitly through actual use. And let me run a video here that shows you the probe flows that we record from people driving around the world. So let me explain you a little bit what happens here. So we're collecting per month in all the countries where the product is live, again, 100 plus countries for navigation, we're collecting basically billions of data probes that tell us how quickly people drive, that tell us what time of the day they drive, how fast. Sometimes they drive roads that we haven't seen before. Sometimes they drive roads differently. We then basically use that flow to basically um, um, look at changes or basically recalculate certain attributes like historical traffic patterns, like driving restrictions. And we then use the industrial capture process by Navtech to go out and verify um, you know, those changes. And then this um, basically gets moved into the core map database out of which we then produce 
the, um, the live database, and then in the end of the day, uh, your phone will be updated incrementally. So we today have actually our entire world decomposed in two square kilometer tiles. And for example, if in Italy at one day, somebody changes an intersection to a roundabout and we see it through the probe flow, we can go out, remap that part of, um, of the map and then push out an incremental map update for that particular square kilometers. That's really the vision that we have is to con connect the virtual cycle. So the more everybody uses the product, the better it gets for everybody. And that's really the vision we have for the community platform is to take the probe flow um, to make the map and make it better around the world on a continuous basis. And this is really one of the capabilities we have by controlling the whole map creation process from the beginning all the way then to the consumer cycle. So that's one of the things. Now maybe quickly um, to give you an idea what's going to happen on the map wiki. This is what our colleagues at Naftec work on. It's basically right now tested in, in, in Africa. I think it's in Ethiopia. It's basically a tool that allows you to basically add streets, street segments, add addresses, add POIs, and lots more information. It's a quite advanced tool. We hope to get it out very soon globally so people can start to build their own maps as the community platform. Again, our platform is, is free of charge to the consumer. So every benefit that the consumer puts into the platform by using it or by basically explicitly mapping it gets back as a value to all the consumers. So what we actually have as the second announcement besides the exciting demo that um, Luca's gonna show in a few seconds is um, my colleague will tomorrow, Christoph Helmis, talk more about those APIs. We are releasing all of these APIs um, to be used across the different platforms. You can see here a quick map. I don't want to go into much details. It's APIs for mapping, APIs for routing, APIs for geocoding, for search, APIs to our places database. The places database currently has about 70 million entries on a global basis. We're adding one to two million um, entries per month. And we really are um, making this all available to also the developers. So it's not just the consumers that make our product better by using it, it's also now basically open to the developers across the board. And you know that we are going to, um, you know, to power uh, major web assets like Yahoo in China, Tencent and Sina, and also through the um, Microsoft partnership, we will also um, play a major role in the future evolution of Bing Maps. And these are the APIs that will be also available to everybody else. So um, I wanna now um, leave it to Luca. You have now, I think, about three and a half minutes if we compensate for the beginning to um, show you the um, exciting um, new um, 3D maps that we just launched on our website, Maps Adobe. Please. Right, thank you, Michael. So yeah, I'm going to, the, to demo quickly uh, our latest plugin release um, for the 3D maps on maps.adobe.com. Um, so what you see here is a, a three-dimensional uh, globe textured with satellite imageries. And behind uh, the globe, there are some render, dynamically rendered uh, stars. So let's say that we uh, select some, uh, a city. We offer 20 city as a 3D city for our 3D experience. We select San Francisco to explore a little bit San Francisco. So uh, now we land on San Francisco uh, downtown. What you see here is um, a 3D uh, surface reconstructed uh, and textured with very high resolution imagery. So we are not actually talking about a, a city built by single building blocks on top of a surface, but it's a completely reconstructed uh, surface object, textured, of course, with, with very high resolution imagery. So in this case, um, what you see here is the detailed description of the reality, basically. Every single object has been captured inside this uh, high resolution 3D mesh. Now, uh, let's see that uh, we can explore like the city center a little bit and uh, move around, go a little bit down, a little bit more. But since we want to go beyond uh, just an aerial experience from, from the sky, so to say, um, we are able to offer also uh, an experience, 3D experience directly from the street level. So uh, you are able to jump down to explore the street. Um, so uh, to navigate uh, along the street, and if you like, you can also, of course, uh, go out again. Now, the other very interesting information is actually the coverage of this uh, 3D surface. Um, you see here the downtown of San Francisco. Um, now let's see, we turn around a little bit more, and you can see even see uh, the, the Golden Gate Bridge uh, down there. But um, we, we want to go a little bit beyond also this, uh, this urban area. 
And uh, if I tilt a little, little bit more, you see that the coverage is going through uh, basically the whole peninsula. Um, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. Then land here around. Yeah, and then this is the place where we are right now. This is the hotel, this is the convention center. Everything has been captured and reconstructed, reconstructed in a very high detail. So you can see basically everything, not only the building, but the, uh, the, the trees, the grass, the cars, and so on. Now let's say that we can say, now we go back to the globe level, and uh, we can explore other cities. Now you can do it by yourself. You just go to maps.ovi.com slash 3D or you can pass by our booth. I will be very pleased to give you a demo and uh, we can discuss some more technical details so you can give us some, some suggestions and so on. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we're really trying now also with um, you know, our partnership with Microsoft and I know that Blaze is going to talk next to kind of you know, align you know, the, the street vector data and the, 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 you know, the assets we have from Navtech, some of which we also have seen here and also other parts come from a partner we work with called C3 and actually moving this together into one pervasive um, you know, mapping asset. And I think um, Blaze has some exciting ideas there. And so I'll finish with this and um, thanks for the attention. Thanks. <laughs>